Today on Earth, the largest insect you might encounter is a Goliath beetle, which is about the size of your fist. But 300 million years ago, Earth crawled with insects as big as your dog. Scorpions reached 2 feet long and millipedes grew to over 8 feet. You may think these creatures were some kind of mutants, but these were not mutants or aliens. They were a product of Earth's unique conditions during the Carboniferous period. Hi, I am Eggy, and this is a video about the Carboniferous era. We will try to find what caused these creatures to grow so large, and more importantly, could something like this ever happen again? So, what on Earth caused these creatures to grow to such monstrous sizes? To answer this question effectively, we need to piece together evidence from Earth's distant past, examining fossilized remains and analyzing ancient atmospheric conditions. We will look through three key factors that contributed to insect gigantism. As we dive into the first key factor, imagine a world where every breath you take floods your body with three times more oxygen than it does today. This is not science fiction. It is exactly what Carboniferous era offered. How exactly would this oxygen-rich atmosphere create giant insects? Let's find out. Our atmosphere today contains about 21% oxygen, a level that's remained relatively stable for millions of years. But during the Carboniferous period, oxygen levels soared to an astounding 30 to 35%. This dramatic increase in atmospheric oxygen was a game changer for life on Earth, particularly for insects. To understand why this matters, we need to look at how insects breathe. Unlike us, insects do not have lungs. Instead, they have a network of tiny tubes called trachea that deliver oxygen directly to their cells. This system works well for small creatures, but as insects grow larger, it becomes less efficient. The high oxygen levels of the Carboniferous period changed this equation. With more oxygen available, insects could grow much larger without needing to evolve more complex respiratory systems. It is like upgrading from a narrow straw to a wide pipe. Suddenly, more oxygen could flow through their bodies, supporting larger sizes and more active lifestyles. Think of it like this. Imagine trying to run a marathon while breathing through a straw. Now, picture switching to a garden hose. That's how these ancient insects felt with so much oxygen to fuel their bodies. This relationship between oxygen concentration and insect size is beautifully illustrated by Meganuera, a dragonfly-like creature that lived during this period with a wingspan of up to 75 centimeters, which is about 2.5 feet. Meganuera was roughly the size of a modern eagle. In comparison, today's dragonflies typically have wingspans of only 5 to 10 centimeters. What would you do if one of these giant insects came chasing you? Tell me in the comments below. The abundance of oxygen did not just allow insects to grow bigger. It supercharged their entire physiology. With more oxygen available, insects could burn energy more efficiently through aerobic metabolism. This meant they could sustain higher levels of activity, potentially making them faster, stronger and more aggressive than their modern counterparts. This may make you think all animals in the Carboniferous era were huge. But this oxygen-fueled gigantism did not affect all animals equally. While insects grew to enormous sizes, many vertebrates did not experience the same dramatic increase in size. While insects thrived on extra oxygen, vertebrates' respiratory systems were already complex enough. Extra oxygen did not give them the same growth advantage, so they stayed relatively small. The high oxygen levels of the Carboniferous period created a unique window of opportunity for insect evolution. It allowed these creatures to push the boundaries of their body plants, 
exploring size ranges that are impossible in today's atmosphere. This period of experimentation left us with a fossil record filled with insects of truly monstrous proportions. But the oxygen levels were not the only reason. Another massive factor came from the ground up, quite literally. Before we move on, make sure to like this video to show some support. Thank you. While giant insects buzzed through the air, an equally dramatic transformation was happening on the ground. Insects were not the only ones that were huge. As you walk through this prehistoric forest, you would be dwarfed by the trees around you. Imagine stepping into a world where trees towered hundreds of feet tall, their trunks wider than houses, creating a canopy so dense it blocked out the sun. Sounds like I am describing a scene from Jurassic Park. But it was Earth during the Carboniferous period. The Carboniferous era witnessed an explosive growth of terrestrial plant life. Particularly, large forests of vascular plants like lycopods, ferns, and seed ferns. These ancient forests were unlike anything we see today. They grew at an astounding rate, rapidly covering the land with lush vegetation. This green revolution played a crucial role in shaping the environment that allowed insects to grow to monstrous sizes. One of the most significant impacts of this plant explosion was its effect on atmospheric oxygen levels. Through photosynthesis, these vast forests pumped enormous amount of oxygen into the air. These were like massive industries that were 24-7 pumping oxygen into the atmosphere. But that's not all. The unique conditions of the Carboniferous period amplified this effect even further. Picture sprawling swamps, filled with decaying plant matter. When these dead plants were submerged in these swamps, oxygen could not reach them. As a result, they were preserved and prevented from decomposing. This process, which is known as carbon sequestration, locked away carbon and allowed oxygen to accumulate in the atmosphere. Over time, these buried plants would transform into the coal deposits we mine today. Make sure to thank these dead plants for this. <laughs> but the impact of these forests went beyond just oxygen production. They created rich, diverse ecosystems that supported complex food webs. The decomposition of organic matter in these wetlands created fertile soils, which in turn supported the growth of even larger plant species. The cycle of growing and decaying created nutrient-rich environment that was perfect for sustaining large organisms. For insects, this slush vegetation offered more than just oxygen. It provided an abundance of food. With such plentiful resources available, insects could allocate more energy to growth and reproduction, rather than focusing solely on survival. The unique environmental conditions of the Carboniferous period likely created evolutionary pressures that favored larger body sizes among certain groups of organisms. This explains why we see the emergence of giant insects like Meganoera and Arthropleura. One of the key factors in the rise of giant insects was the relative lack of vertebrate predators during this period. If only there were apes with a pipe that fired metals at them. <laughs> Without significant predation pressure, insects were free to explore larger body sizes without the risk of being easily picked off. This ecological vacuum allowed insects to dominate their ecosystems. Yet, the story does not end with predators. There is even stranger reasons these creatures grew so enormous. And it has to do with something as simple as climate. The Carboniferous era was characterized by a warm, humid climate that resembled a supercharged greenhouse. This climate had a profound effect on insect metabolism and growth. Insect being cold-blooded creatures thrive in warmer temperatures. The consistently high temperatures of the Carboniferous period allowed insects to maintain higher metabolic rates, promoting faster growth and larger body sizes. Here, the climate was not the only factor at play. 
During this time, Earth's geography underwent a dramatic transformation with the formation of the supercontinent Pangaea. This massive landmass had far-reaching effects on atmospheric conditions and nutrient distribution. The collisions of continents that formed Pangaea led to the creation of vast swampy areas, particularly along the equatorial regions. These swamps became the perfect breeding ground for giant insects. The humid conditions of the swamp forests created stable microclimates that were helpful to the survival and growth of large organisms. These environments offered consistent moisture and temperature, allowing insects to thrive without the stress of adapting to fluctuating conditions. The stability of these habitats played a crucial role in fostering the evolution and diversification of insect species. The combination of these factors created a sweet spot for insect growth, allowing them to reach sizes that seem almost unbelievable by today's standards. Take for example, Palmino scorpius, ancient version of scorpion with a body length of up to 28 inches. This creature was not just large, it was a formidable predator in its ecosystem, likely feeding on other insects and small amphibians. Another giant of the Carboniferous was Arthropleura, a millipede-like arthropod that could reach lengths over 2.6 meters, that's 8.5 feet. Despite its imposing size, Arthropleura was likely a gentle giant, feeding on decaying plant matter in the swampy forests. Its role in the ecosystem was crucial, contributing to nutrient cycling and soil formation in these ancient environments. But now we do not have insects this big. Why is that so? As the Carboniferous period transitioned into the Permian, the giant insects faced a changing world. The high oxygen levels that had fueled their growth began to decline, and the climate cooled. Without enough oxygen, their large bodies just could not survive anymore. But imagine how different life would be today if those conditions still existed. Would humans even be at the top of the food chain? Or would we be dodging giant insects and towering trees? Let me know your wildest thoughts in the comments. The prehistoric world may be long gone, but it shaped the future of life on Earth in ways we are only beginning to understand. Talking of shaping the future, if you want to know if we will ever live on Mars, check out this video. Thank you for watching.